sunglasses because they just make me feel like John Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. Uh, you look like him. I certainly don't, but I appreciate it. With the glasses. Right. <laughs> you know what? So far, you're the only person I've interviewed that seems to be louder than just a flat line. Oh yeah, that's a... Which is great. That's a thing. <laughs> Because that means that whoever's editing this, they're not going to have a hard time with this one. No, they're not. Mm. I'm naturally like this. It's Good. It's been instilled in, in me, I should say, yeah. since birth. Right, right. So you've been naturally just kind of loud. loud. <laughs> That's me too. Right. No, I get it. I get it. I, I do remember... I remember Emily Pierce in eighth grade telling me to stop shouting, and I was just more like talking to the teacher in class. <laughs> mm, I used to be, my teacher used to send me um, with notes home to my mother and say, Janelle, you know, she is a great girl, but she's such a social bunny. <laughs> and then my mom be like, oh, okay, social bunny that ass upstairs, girl. Right. You better open up a book because you're in trouble. <laughs> That's and a so, really nice way of saying a total chatterbox. Yes, you know, a social bunny. Yes, right? that's exactly what that's who it. I was. That's right. Still am. Well, this is the Liquid Arts Network podcast, and this is interesting because you had, you you interviewed me for when I was reading my own material. Yeah, I did. Several hours ago. Several hours. <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't I wasn't wearing this several hours ago. You but, were not. No, I, I I came I came to the building in this, but I just like look I just like. I just like wearing this right now, yeah. But you a little shake up. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling yeah, it. That's right. Because I don't, you know, I don't know what day this is being released on. So there we go. I've got a blue sort of parka on mm. with with some round sunglasses on. That's mm. it's a look that I enjoy. I'm into it. I'm yeah, feeling it. That's it's right. it. You and I are both very stylish too. Thank you. I know you mentioned my uh, my yellow hair. It's yeah. actually blonde. Blonde. Yeah. But no, it's a deep yellow. Yeah, because <laughs> I have no toner left. <laughs> well, I read I read some stuff for you earlier, so you're gonna have to read some stuff for us, right? Yeah, I have. I'll read one piece that I wrote. Okay, cool. And um, so the story goes that um, I don't dream. Mm -hmm. You don't dream. I have nightmares. Oh, really? Every day? Uh, it will actually, for about four years straight, mm -hmm. I was having um, nothing but nightmares. And so, um, usually what I would do um, would just write them down, because they were actually pretty interesting. Why do you think you were having nightmares for four years? Um, That's a really good question for four why was I having nightmares for four years? Did um, you ever, I mean, you must have wondered about this yourself. I did, I did, and I've also looked it up, but um, Google wasn't really giving me the answer I wanted. Mm. Um, so, and, uh, you know, what does AI know about you anyway, besides what it, you know, the program to? Right. But um, I think that I was a little bit depressed. Mm. I was a little depressed. Um, it's actually a lot, because, so I say four years because, um, I've been living abroad for five. Okay. And it's... Um, Where are you from originally? Originally, that's Wilmington, Delaware. Okay. So, so like, East Coast, United States. Um, I grew up in I grew up in the suburb, suburbs. That's a beautiful part of the country. I love New England and Delaware and Rhode Island and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. I actually... I It's it's nostalgic <laughs> when I go home because, right. you know, I, I didn't appreciate it until I left. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so when I go home to visit, which is now about every two years, mm -hmm. I've been living abroad for five, going on six. Wow, it's been so long. <laughs> yeah, this year it'll be six years I've been living um, here, and um, I lived previously in Japan. So, um, so, but it's hard. So I think I had all those nightmares because, like, it was just kind of taking a toll on me. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. I didn't have nightmares every night, but when I did 
uh, remember that I yeah. dreamed about, they would always be. Do you have any yeah. nightmares in particular that you remember? Oh, absolutely. I have a, um, I have a few, and these, these, um, t these, uh, these two that I remember more vividly than the third. Um, they were both about zombies. Zombies. Yes. And okay. I'm a huge, huge, huge zombie fan. I mean, you can give me like a Korean zombie movie, uh, Train to Busan. I yeah. mean, uh, Train to Busan, Busan Dead. Walking, Walking Dead, Night oh, of the please. Living Dead. I love The Walking Dead. 28 Night Days Later. Oh, 28 Days, 28 Weeks. Nice. You know, give me a V-rated zombie movie. <laughs> give me a zombie movie that's never been, you know, uh, featured anywhere. I would watch it. Yeah. Because I just yeah. love zombies that in that cool. in that way. So, yeah, I've had a few dreams about those, but they're really long, so. Hmm. Did you uh, ever play the game The Last of Us? No, I did not. That's a zombie game. I heard. Is it for PS4 or just Xbox? I heard it was just Xbox. It might. No, it's both because I have it on on PS4. Oh, okay. So it must be both. After I finish Resident Evil Five, maybe I will do. Um, it's what's good. It called Life or Dead. The Last of Us. Oh, the Last. And of it's us. a good time to play it because they're about to release the sequel. Oh, The Last of Us. Yeah. So what am I thinking about? Was something about Dead Four? Left, Left for dead. dead. Left oh, for dead. That's different. Right, yes, right. that's a different series. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Have you played that one? I haven't. Mm, okay. No, but I, I, do, I too like zombie stuff. Zombie. Zombie yeah. stuff is a lot of fun. For whatever reason, it's just my favorite. Horror is my favorite <clears throat> genre, and so um, I really like. I, I really I'm drawn to it. And then you know, specifically about zombies. Yeah. That's what makes me interested the most. And, you right. know, I'm a big fan of uh, Max Brooks, mm -hmm. um, who uh, who wrote uh, World War Z. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And um, another one I read was of his was um, the How to Survive a Zombie Guide. Okay. But those are only two I've read. I know he's written more. But he's coming out with a new one. Um, I can't remember the name, but it's supposed to be coming out this month or next month, I think. They're not zombie people per se, but no. if you like if you like if you like horror, how do you feel about the careers of filmmakers like Ari Oster, Jordan Peele, and Robert Eggers, oh, for instance? Okay. Mm. With uh with films like Midsummer and Hereditary and Get Out and Us and well, The Witch. I'm and... familiar with Jordan Peele. Yeah. Um and The Witch I'm I'm not sure. Give me a synopsis of the wish, really quick. That's that right takes now. place in okay. 17th century New England, where there's like this one family is so puritanical they've been outcast from the rest of their Puritan oh, okay. pilgrim people. But there's a witch in the woods, and I, I think I just saw that on. Um, there's a black goat in there as well. I feel like I saw that when it was being reviewed on like one of the Korean channels sure, when sure. I turned it on and stuff like okay. that. But um, to answer your question. Uh, you said, how do I feel? Well, because that's some of the best horror movies around these days. I think, uh, well, I'll speak on Jordan Peele because I've seen both of those movies yeah. and, I, and I feel as though he's really creating space mm. um, for a uh, black voice in horror because yeah. that's just not something that you see all the time. And so it's it's really inspirational and um, I'm drawn to it. I, I'm into it. I mean, I've seen Get Out three times in theaters. It's a great I saw one. Us two times in theaters. Yeah. Um, and it was, I mean, you know, I... I just love horror so much, and then to see it done in the in in mainstream like that with um, by a black director, I mean, I really, um, it's really motivational to, mm. to to say the least. And um, you know, so yeah, you know, I think he's pushing pushing the envelope. Yeah, uh, as far as you know, Peel's concerned, you know. Yeah, I'm looking forward to to his career for sure. Yeah, what, absolutely. What are you reading for us today? Okay, so I have just a, a little tiny something. So I don't do a whole bunch of external writing. But okay. um, this one um, came to me after one of those dreams I was oh, okay. telling you about. One of those um, nightmares? Yes. Do you yes. still get those? Not as often. Okay, good. No, no, no. So I, 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 I have dreams these days. Because, you know, I saw a therapist, so everybody go see one of those because uh -huh. they help you solve, to solve your problems. Sure. <laughs> so now I dream uh -huh. after uh, after four years. Um, but this particular um, one, yeah, was um, after a nightmare that I had had, and I thought it was good, and, um, you know, I just wanted to share. Okay, even good. I, even though I don't share often, so. Good. Oh, um, remember do. I told you you inspired me. Yeah, well, I'm I'm looking forward to it. So, <laughs> how many how many are you, pieces are you sharing for us? Just this one. Just this one. Okay. Just this one. Yeah. All right. It's a short story. Cool. And it's called The Bus. The Bus. Mm. All right. Part 1. No matter how many times I wipe my arm across the window, I 
still couldn't see outside. Which was odd because it was a clear sunny day. I can't say I noticed the murky windows before I got on the bus either. When I pressed my nose slightly against the glass, I jumped back in surprise at how cold it was. I didn't understand. Outside, I had to take off my jacket. I rubbed my nose to jumpstart the circulation again. You okay? A whisper tickled from behind my shoulder. I shuddered with visual animation. Why was there breath support? I turned around, still rubbing my nose. Yeah, I'm okay. Thank Who? All right. This was getting weird. I know I felt someone invasively close to my neck. Their breath, the annotation in their speech, and I'm sure I could even hear the gap in between their two front teeth. But there wasn't anyone behind me. Rather, many people behind me, and they were all just staring. One, two, three, four, two kids, and two teenagers. The closest one was three seats back towards the middle of the bus, nowhere near my shoulder. They all looked similar too. Long, curly rust-colored hair and yellowish brown pale skin, like they had the flu. Then they had these eyes. Eyes big and black, as in a UFO. I checked the bus stop queue at the front above the change machine, but I couldn't see that sign either. It was also covered in dew. The neon flashing letters were visible but blurry, making out any of it was futile. When my sneaker squeaked against the ground, I looked down. More dew. What is happening? It hasn't rained in over two weeks. On the seat next to me, I took a finger to its cushion. Condensation transferred onto my index, and a droplet trickled down. Why is it so wet in here? I looked over my shoulder again, still staring. The closest one, a small girl had the biggest eyes. She looked sad, unfulfilled. She was holding on to a brown teddy bear with the same sad expression. Her arms, which also looked wet, wrapped around the bear's neck and belly area. But when I looked closer, her right arm had a huge laceration going horizontally. It was filled with a yellowish brown pus that leaked and oozed over the bear. Two seats behind her across the aisle, were two more girls, older, maybe late teens. But beyond that, I couldn't know anything else because their bodies were covered with matching blue button-up raincoats. One had the reddish-brown curly hair knotted and matted down to her face. The other was protected under medium-sized box braids of the same color. I don't get this. It's a clear day. The one closest to the window raised her hand to wave at me. Her pinky and ring finger were missing. The last one, the one all the way in the back, he was the creepiest of all. A chubby boy, he had a bag of no-name brand tortilla chips sitting at his side. He sat in the last row where the seats ran all across the back. He sat in the center seat with the bag of unopened chips squeezing between the armrest and his thigh. No raincoat. High top fade, freshly cut, untied shoelaces swinging below his tennis shoes, gray cargo shorts, and a t-shirt. He looked concerned, as if he knew his weekend would be spent in his room playing solitaire because his math quiz produced a barely passing grade. Suddenly, his eyes grew larger. His forehead wrinkled up with worry. He lifted up his leg, trying to push himself back in the seat. His opposite arm grabbed hold of the headrest bar of the next chair. His mouth opened wide, revealing two missing front teeth. A shoe slipped off and fell to the floor. The bag of tortilla chips crunched underneath the boy's growling, growing panic. His jaw continued to stretch wider and wider. Eventually, the corners of his mouth, his lips, began to slowly tear open. And yellowish-brown pus oozed from both sides. It dripped onto his t-shirt. Those big, black eyes never turned away from mine. His jaw dropped so low it hung open, detached from the rest of his face, almost completely. I could have thrown up if I had breath there. I spun around and hit the stop button to be let out. The confirmation light didn't go off. I tried again. Nothing. What is happening? 
I got up and moved to the front, with the bus still moving, grabbing the support bar to balance myself. I knocked on the safety glass that barricaded the driver. Sir, this is my stop. I tried to sound calm, but the panic was moving up my esophagus. He didn't look away from the road. Sir, please, this is my stop. Let me out, I cried in frustration. A single cough erupted from the driver, then again. Then continuously, he coughed onto the steering wheel and the windshield. His chest heaved up and down and phlegm flew out of his mouth. The man gave another deep inhale and let out a lasting bellow. Yellowish brown pus sprayed on his t-shirt. Wheel and all over the all over the dashboard. The fluids ran down his mouth and he finally gave me a glance, acknowledging me. His neck followed after his eyes. He smiled and replied, It's not our stop. Oh. So creepy. <laughs> this gives me the willies just hearing of. Yeah, so. Oh, wow. That's that. I mean, I that I feel like I've had this nightmare before. Oh, really? I mean, I mean, it's just it's very evocative of the kind of sort of nightmares I remember having mm -hmm, before. Mm -hmm. And it's I guess the bad dreams that I have now are a little bit different than the bad dreams I had maybe when I was a bit younger. Really? But well, I guess now they might be more um I don't know, based on life anxiety or life that. angst Realism. and stuff like that, but but you know, the, the the nightmares I do remember, you know, the when they were really much more frightening perhaps mm, then mm. than they are now does the, the memories I have do seem to involve a lot of sort of like approaching people from behind and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, this horror that's revealed by the time they're turned around and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. I, mean, I feel like I've had this mm -hmm. uh, nightmare before or something very similar to Yeah, it. yeah. I think that is something to be said about, um, I don't know, things that really make your um the hairs on the back of your neck thing that yeah you know I mean? that's a great story it man. was great that's phenomenal. great i mean that's why i think i like horror as well as i mean you said it's your favorite genre yes, it, it might is. be mine as well yeah Fantastic. oh i get it man i get it mm -hmm. thanks so much for sharing your your story with us um, it's really you know horror is one of those things that most people well, I mean, I think a lot of people like, but not many people say it's their favorite. Yeah. So that's yeah. what makes you have a very unique voice. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Is that you, horror is your favorite genre? Absolutely, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Janelle, thanks so much. We'll Thank see you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we'll see you again. Bye.